Now that doesn't look too bad. Actually, it looks really good. Oof. It was just over at Dee Dee's, and what a blast. It was watching Samantha jelly plate for the first time. I have to say, I was jealous. She had some awesome pulls. And um, Helen Bacola really made a good point when she said, I don't think Samantha realizes how good her first pulls were. And I agreed. I don't think I've ever had uh, an image transfer as, as good as some of hers were today. It's pretty awesome. <clears throat> I know I'm on early. So I'm here. I figured I'd just come on. Top chat. I don't want top chat, do I? I want live chat where everything is visible. Oh, well, nobody's here. <clears throat> I seem to be in focus. However, this little turtle is not in focus. I don't know. Well, maybe he is. He's going to go in the forest book. I've been foresting. I've been cutting out pictures that I think would look good. I've got them kind of on the pages. Because this is always a shorter stream. I'm glad there are two people here. It's another hub day. <clears throat> I wonder how that, you know, it's interesting. Once, you know, when I was working, once Wednesday rolled around, <clears throat> the rest of the week usually went by pretty quickly. Sometimes not. Thanks for the two thumbs up. Hey, Belinda. Thanks for being here. Angie, just wanted to say hello. Well, I'll just say hello back. <clears throat> Did you have your nap? That was quite the stream today at Dee Dee's, wasn't it? It was a lot of fun. It's got to be hard. I mean, Devin's teaching and, you know, trying to read her directions and then translate those for Samantha and then Samantha, but man, towards the end, Samantha was really getting the barren action down and the brayering down. Every time I watch people jelly plate, I want to take mine out in the worst way and say, give it another shot. Every once in a while, I give it a shot. Hi, Marguerite. How are you today? I hope you're doing well. <laughs> For the middle of the week. It's going to be hot here today. Well, it's starting to, I think it's going to be 83, which is not hot for Florida, but um, yeah, before I leave to go play bridge, I'm going to close up the windows and turn the AC on. I keep the house at 78 in the summertime and 78 is comfortable, especially when it's 95 outside. Got a lot of bird action out here, but they're not singing like they were a couple of weeks ago. I can just hear the hawks. That's right. That's right. I so you did mention that. You mentioned that uh, at Colleen and Kathy's, right? I think that's where you said that. It's addictive. 
It really is. It's just, it's just so much fun. And of course, you can do it in any book, I guess. Uh, Dee Dee's the one that started it. Hi, Ampex. Are you going to be on this afternoon? I had one of those nights, you know, you know what I'm talking about. One of those nights where the word sleep is not in your vocabulary for a little bit. Okay. All right. I didn't sleep at all. Not at all. I even tried calm and um, just was not coming. So I'm really tired. I didn't get out of bed until 10.30. Took a shower, had some coffee. At a breakfast bar, I was watching Dee Dee in bed. I was watching Dee Dee and, and Denise and her hot and spicy pickles. I thought that was pretty funny. I mean, in big red letters, it said hot and spicy. But those are things you just don't see because when you go food shopping, I don't know, at least with me, there are so many options and so many choices and it's really hard to you know to discern what you're buying especially uh you know one of the worst i think is campbell soup because you've got their healthy requests you've got low sodium no sodium you know and you know light diet low fat no fat and it's like five different varieties of cream of mushroom soup it takes forever for your eyes to focus on what you want but a while back I bought tuna fish for my cat, Lily, and I buy it packed in water. And they ship me tuna packed in vegetable oil. And in big red letters on the case of tuna, it said in red, packed in vegetable oil. And I really couldn't return it. I guess I could have. And I thought, well, maybe she'll eat it. And of course, she wouldn't. And I tried rinsing the oil off. So I keep on waiting for a food drive to come by because I would just give it to the food drive because I have like half a case of it. And uh, so it's in the back of my pantry. Keep on waiting because usually the post office has a food drive. Yeah, Dee Dee was fun. Yep. And you know what? She is a good teacher. I know she says she's not, but she really is. She was very, very patient uh, and very not jumping in. I know she was itching to jump in and do the braying and all that stuff for Samantha, but she let her, you know, and she got really good. I mean, and the ombres, the, that one ombre that she had was awesome. So, well, I'm going to start. Um, so I've got pictures already cut out obviously. And I have some of them. Uh, yeah, I'm very sleepy. Yeah, I think you have to bridge. I, you know, and I would almost skip today. But today is when we learn something new. And tomorrow is when we practice what we learn today. And I hate to miss a learning day. But I don't know how well I'm going to be able to pay attention. So we'll see how that goes. And tomorrow, oh my God, I've got a busy day. I've got bridge from 10 to noon. Um, and then I have a doctor's appointment. Oh, I got my new glasses. And I like them. And they do have the nose pads. But the nose pads, I think, are a little bit too tight. So the top of my nose is really sore. I'm assuming that I'll get used to them. Because the other glasses I had had the plastic and they kept on sliding down my nose. So, and the prescription's a little bit stronger. All right. A foresting we shall go. And I did finish my scavenger hunt. And uh, let me show you ugh, if I can get to it without knocking over half. I, I put the cover, I put the title on it. That's the only thing I added. Let's see. So there's the title. Scavenger Hunt 2024, and it's a wrap. For another year. 
So, and this is the same guy that does abandoned places, right? So here I've picked her out. I think she looks good lounging in the, let's see, oh boy, get rid of that. Hmm, how do you, well, turn that over there. Point it at the ceiling, huh? I wonder how you get rid how do you get rid of the glare? Oh, it's all it's in the picture. Duh. I'm all right. Hi, Tori. <clears throat> Great to see you. It's the the glare is not the glare is in the picture. It's not my camera. It's not my uh light. Well, maybe it is my light. I'll stick that over there. Oh, that's the that's the picture. I'm all right. All right. So let's glue her down. I got a little. <laughs> Trying to think what I want to do next. And I'm thinking again. I was talking about doing a. Like a roaring 20s. Jazz age. Kind of flapper. Gangster. Kind of journal. With that, that type of ephemera in the background. Hi, Pam. Hi, Candy. In the background. I've been uh, looking for pictures. I was hoping that Graphics Fairy maybe had like a Roaring Twenties bundle. But they don't. But they have some of the Roaring Twenties like fashion. I don't know. Should he be on the foot of the bed maybe? And, um, but I found, if you go to the Library of Congress, just type in Library of Congress, um, they have thousands of photographs and paintings and such, and you can uh, print off those prints too. So I got some prints from that. And I bought some fabric from Rosemary a while back. And this is a 12 by 12 piece of fabric, which I scanned. And I thought this would be a really... Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Candy. That's rough. I thought this would be a kind of neat cover for the, the journal. But I would have to maybe shrink it down. But this is actually a 12 by 12 piece of fabric um, that I got from Rosemary. And I thought that would be kind of with the spit curls. So that's, I don't know. I just have these two. I don't I, I just think I'm just going to stick them there just for the hell of it. They don't make, doesn't make any sense. I don't really want to stick them on a picture, so we'll just stick them on Europe. How's that? There. They're looking. I've got a big refrigerator, so I'm going to stick that. Let me have to move this down a little bit. That's the problem. It looks a little big. All right, stick the refrigerator over here. <clears throat> yeah. I don't know, over here. Yeah, we'll stick it over here. What the hell? That's kind of a neat picture, too. So, Candy, is this a recent diagnosis, or this is something that they've been, you know, doing tests on, and that's the determination that they came to? Tilted a floating refrigerator. Oh, 
Oh, okay. Autoimmune. Yeah, you know, that's my fear too, uh, Candy. I see the doctor Thursday, and I see her every three months for the medication that I take for my rheumatoid arthritis. And, of course, I have blood work done every three months, and uh, I always listen for her to say, your liver looks good, because that scares me. I think we need a chair. Let's see. To peruse what's inside the refrigerator. Okay. All right. I love cutting out furniture, even though it's a real pain to cut out, but I just love the way it looks. Whoops. Ooh. A little, little chair. Now, let me get this out. Boy, this is driving me crazy. It's not driving. It's not too dark. It's a little dark, but not too dark. Let me get down a little glue here. Oh, Tori, you're sweet. You're real wonderful friend hi Kathy thank you for the uh, the prints on the fabric I showed them on Sunday I know I don't know hi Alicia I don't know if they're allowed to do that or not but I did it anyway uh, I am a fan of the Beatles and of course that song. I grew up with the Beatles. I mean, that's the Beatles is they, you know, they hit Ed Sullivan when I was 12 and they broke up when I was 21. So that was pretty much, uh, you know, my, my, you know, good part of my listening career, you know, from 13 to 21. I remember I was so heartbroken. <gasps> and then when John Lennon was killed, Oh my God. I mean, it was just, I have nothing for this. Wait a minute, take that back. I think I was going to put this white puppy right here. He's kind of, I want to stick him like here because he's kind of flat. But, yeah, he's going to maybe up here. Maybe over here. I thought maybe his butt could be on one of these rocks. But. Yeah, maybe I'll stick them here. Yeah. Yeah, those prints were really neat. And I love them on the on the material. They came out really good. They really did. So let's see. Yeah. About right here. Put them right in the middle of the page, even though I know you're not supposed to do that. I've been watching a lot of uh, the guy that did the uh, the art lessons for a week, Nicholas oh, Wilton, I think is his name. And he's on now. Oh, my God. And he's got a, uh, I mean, it was a great, week you know he did um design which is composition obviously and value and color and those are basically the three principles that he taught and then on thursday and friday they kind of practice those and it was interesting and he does mostly abstract. And um, and he had a lot of people that were on that had been through his, of course, when it was all said and done, he had a course, a 12-week course to sell, um, which was very, at least, yeah, a very it, pricey in my, you know, for me. It was uh, for 12 weeks, it was 
it was over two thousand dollars and um I got this big old guy here. Stick him over here. Whoops, he's got a big lava. And it was only, I mean, and you can only access the, the course, the content of the course for a year. After that, it went away. And I thought for over $2,000, you should have access for it for life. That's my opinion. And I, you know, what do I know? But I learned some stuff, and I really wanted to get out, you know. He's one of those painters, big canvases and big brushes and big, you know, swashes of color. And it looks like so much fun. I don't have any big canvases. I've got big pieces of cardboard. Um, it's just part of it. Well, but if she's been on a lot of medication due to, like, arthritis or autoimmune, it could be, it's hard to say. I've got nothing for here yet. Let's see. And for this page, I have a little bunny that he's actually... Oh, this book is so big. The bunny's going to go over here. And I don't know what people are doing with these areas. I haven't seen anybody. Uh, I mean, Didi would paint these out. But this was basically the, the parameters for this was no. Yeah. I mean, those are Bob. Bob Ross is awesome. He certainly makes you feel like, you know, it's doable, right? I love it when he does the trees and he takes the brush and goes dee, 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 dee. And all of a sudden there's a gorgeous pine tree. So the premise for this book was just glue and pictures and no paint. Even though I've been tempted to cover this area, maybe with another, I don't know. So I'm right for now. I mean, I haven't seen anybody deal with these white areas. I have put some pictures down or some something over the text in some of the pictures. So we'll put the little bunny here because he's just, I don't even know where he came from, but with Easter coming, we'll put the bunny. Have you ever thought, I mean, these are things I think about. Oh, Candy saying she knew Bob Ross. He was not a nice man. Oh, Candy's got some dirt on Bob. I like this guy. And this guy is just, I don't know, whether he should maybe be over here and this guy over here. I know a lot of the ladies are putting multiple pictures on. Carol Duval. That name is familiar. He plagiarized from William Alexander. Wow. I wish I could say I knew who William Alexander is, but I don't, Candy. I'm assuming another artist. Who was the other guy? Uh, Nagy? I don't know whether... Did Nag Nagy have a TV show or not? I had a Nagy, uh, like, drawing set. Does Nagy... Oh, okay. Okay. Whoops. He's got a little errant eyebrow there, I guess. Or the fancy cutter didn't do a fancy job enough. I'm going to stick him there. And I'll stick this guy over here. He looks like a happy soul. I'm not too, putting too much glue on this. These just kind of. 
trying to get, oh, no, no, I just tore his neck, no. Stick him here. There you go, dude, with your shovel. I was watching, I didn't do a good job with that. Uh, I can come back and fix that, oh, there it's down. Which is probably not a good thing, since I couldn't sleep, I was watching TV on my iPad. From the home show, oh, okay. He looks like a hearty soul. Right. Ooh, yeah, I got a whole bunch for this. I'm still not sure. This this guy is from the same illustration as this guy came from. Ooh, maybe I should put him there. He's offering him an apple. Yes. Let's see, uh, candy. Oh, yeah, Nagy. You're talking about Nagy? Yeah, he had a, he did have a drawing set. Okay, but I can't remember his first name. Can you remember his first name? I think this dude's going to go here. But, um, yeah, let me do that now. Uh, let me put that down here so I can... PBS, yes. Because <laughs> I used to love to watch Julia Childs on PBS. Oh, my God. Bon appetit. She'd be slinging that flower around, and she'd have flour on her face and in her hair, and there'd be flour everywhere. And that's in black and white. A mall stick. Oh. <laughs> she lived in Cambridge. I'm talking about Julia Child. Um, and uh, I'm going to put this... Because he's missing a leg here. So I'm going to put that like kind of up against his shovel. So it doesn't look so weird. Not that this doesn't look weird. But. Uh... <laughs> she lived in Cambridge, Massachusetts. And when she passed away. They took her entire kitchen apart. Yes, I agree. The shadows, yes. They took Julia Child's entire kitchen away, even the wall, the peg wall she had with all her cooking utensils, and they reconstructed it in the Smithsonian Institute. So if you're ever in Washington, D.C., and go to the Smithsonian Institute, the American history one, you too can see Julia Child's kitchen in its entirety at the Smithsonian Institute, which I thought was pretty cool. All right, now, this was an absolute bitch to cut out, but it's so cool. It's a statue in, I want to say Vermont. So this little flighty thing is going to be running through the woods with these ladies in tow. And look how her green shorts kind of don't want her running into the tree, but we'll stick them like so. So that's the plan for this is the layout for these two pages. In your early days, yep. Yeah. Well, we used to take the, uh, this is quite an undertaking. We used to take the entire eighth grade class, which was about 80, 90 kids. 
and fly from Orlando to D.C. And we'd spend four days in D.C. with the kids. So I would go every year. And we went in February, which was great because there were no tourists, believe me, in February in D.C. And um, our hardest thing was to convince these kids that they had to pack accordingly because it was going to be cold from what they're used to, right? And, of course, the kids always prayed for snow, and we always prayed that would be the worst possible thing to be stuck in D.C. with 100 eighth graders and not be able to and have your flight canceled or delayed due, due to snow. And that never happened, fortunately. Well, I probably should have put her lower, but... You can go to France to see J.R. Token Museum. That's cool. Never been to France. Probably never will at this point in my life. But I did have the opportunity to go to uh, Rome and um, been to London a couple of times and been to Dublin and Ireland three times. I was very fortunate. My father worked for a cargo airline, of all things, but he was director of personnel. And he knew directors of personnel of other airlines. And these guys would swap favors for one another. My father might arrange for somebody to have something shipped from Europe for nothing. And then that person in turn would provide free uh, airfare tickets for us to go. So I flew to Rome on Alitalia. And on London Air India, because he knew the director of personnel for Air India Airline. And, uh, and we had first class tickets for that flight. And that was pretty, pretty impressive. I'll tell you what. <laughs> okay. So these ladies are running through the woods after this nymph or whatever this thing is. Hi, Sefi and Nad Nettie. So, Safia, did you sign up for... Uh, hi, Anina. Uh, did you sign up for Nicholas's course? I didn't get enough. Well, that's okay. No one's going to. Me too. So far, this is my definitely my favorite page. I agree, Kathy. This has been be my favorite. I have this gal that looks like she's just stepped out of the water, so I'm just going to stick her there. <laughs> So I'm glad. Thank you for being here and keeping me company while I glue these in place. Let's see, here's some more of this stuff. I just don't know what to do with it, but I want to stick her right here. She looks like well, she's wet and has just come out of the stream. Wasn't it? I agree, Safia. And it's still going on. Oh, okay. It looks good. 
Oh, wow. I didn't realize that uh, Lin Chen's class went until May. No, I was there. For, I mean, I learned some stuff, you know. I, I, I mean, I, I learned some stuff. And I thought, and he's still going because he's still going to, this morning when I was still laying in bed and couldn't sleep. He's still going strong. Or at least. I've got nothing for this. Colleen did a great job on this page. Yes. I agree, 100%, Safia. The courses, yeah, but when he's there talking and they're giving away stuff and he's talking to all the people that have been successful, which is great. You know, it's wonderful that people have taken his course and now are making their living at art. Um, I have this little chocolate chick that came out of the cover of a food magazine, McKenzie, like a food catalog. But Colleen did a really cute job with this warthog. I think it's a warthog. Oh, well, maybe not. It doesn't have uh, bristles. Maybe it's a wild boar. It's not a fallow deer, that's for sure. It looks like a, it's a hairy dude. Royal hunting ground stock with wild boar. Okay, it is wild boar. Yep, it is. What do I have here? I was going to stick her here just, just because, but I still have to cut her out. But she could be. And this is uh, Joanne, right? Joanna from... Um, Chip and Joanna. I'm going to stick her. There's a little path here. So I'm going to stick her here. She's going to be roller skating there. That came off a cover of their magazine called Magnolia. Actually, they call it a journal, Magnolia Journal. I got that for a couple of years. Joanna. Chip and Joanna. They built a nice little empire for themselves. Oh, okay. Chose which dachshund to take to bed. Oh, my gosh. All right. I'll have to save that for a Thursday. Oh, I should. I don't have a magnolia. There. I have to cut out this part of the chair, so I'll have to come back. All right. It's like a little surprise because I put laid these out. Hi, Mariah. <clears throat> How are you today? I'm just playing in the forest book, gluing and chatting. <sighs> I have some pink pink sheep here. I don't know whether that's the same as seeing pink elephants or not, but I've got a pink sh sheep. Lamb, I guess. Pink lamb? It's, oh, it's a sheep. A U. It looks like a U. A pink U. E-W-E. -E, as in female sheep. I started, I was watching, um, the couple that has Fixer, the Fabulous, another couple, oh my God, his name is Dave Marr. Hi, Christine. And they 
took on renovating an old, like two, three hundred year old farmhouse in Tuscany, Italy. So now they're in it and they're doing it for some friends of theirs that. And now they're trying to do this massive re, you know, remodeling of this stone, huge like farm, farmette in Italy, not knowing the language and flying back and forth from Florence to Arkansas where their home and kids are. And they are just about ready to crack. Uh, they hired an architect and then they have somebody I know. Now she knows a little bit of Italian and they have an architect and he, it unbeknownst to them and the couple that bought this place who live there, you know, in that area and he's a cheese maker, they should have known this. But when they met with the architect, it took them over three months just to get the permits. A lot of greasing of palms, I would imagine. And because uh, it's Tuscany, they're going to turn it into like a and b type of thing. So they're putting three bedrooms in, and that means three baths. And... Uh, and he wants an aging cellar for his cheese, and it has to be done by July. Oh, wow. Safia said her parents did a ruin in Southwest Front back in the early 70s. They went through at least two architects, and they were fluent in French. Oh, I know. And of course, they're, they're, they're taking out walls. But these walls are like two feet thick. And one of the plans was to take out this one wall in the, the kitchen. And the architect's assistant said, oh, no, no, no. That's a uh, supporting wall. You can't take that out. And they had thought everything, their plans, the architect had drawn the plans. And they thought it was all good to go. Oh, my God. So I watched that in the wee hours of the morning. Uh, but very interesting. There's someone wrote a book a couple of years ago about renovating an old villa in Tuscany. I can't, Under the Tuscan Sun. That's the name of that book. Does anybody? Oh, yeah. And they're, they're trying to blast through. Uh, oh, my God. Yes. And then the architect had the, well, not the, kidding around. I think he's got the hots for Dave's wife. Um, and he said to him, well, maybe, you know, I should introduce you to the, the council and maybe your good look, your good looks will, you know, move the, the permit process along. And it's probably true. I forgot there was a movie, Candy. Yeah. Under the Tuscan Sun. Yeah, the movie was pretty good. It followed the book pretty well. As he's rubbing her back, he's saying this. I'm going, yeah, right. Now, I have this little guy here who I adore, and I have used him in numerous, well, actually, one of my most favorite collages I've ever done, which I did a couple of years ago. I had this image. Um, but he's so little, and he gets lost. And I was thinking of putting her. Right. Oh, yeah, because that's not creepy, at least. Not in Italy. Well, I can tell you that <laughs> I thought I'd just kind of put her here uh, with her hand kind of pointing down to him a little bit. And i got to put her out of, I'm trying to get her all on the page. She's a little big. I wish they would know that these models are, Well, my mom and I went to Rome because my dad knew somebody that worked for Alitalia, right? We went to Rome. And we had a guide that literally picked us up in St. Peter's Square because we got up 
you know, the first morning and we just took a cab and we got out in St. Peter's Square. And I guess I was 15 at the time. And I figured my mom knew what she was doing. She told me later on she didn't have a clue what she was doing other than she thought going to St. Peter's Square would be a good place to start. So we're walking under the colonnade. Um, and uh, all of a sudden, this little old man, this little old Italian guy kind of comes up behind us and says to my mom in English, you know, fairly good English, would you like a guide? And I'm kind of like looking at this guy. And my mother said, yes, but I would love a guide. And I was like, what? My mother said yes to this guy? And he turned out to be unbelievable. Oh, my God. He knew, you know, priests. And he got his into the Pope's private chapel and into his private relic room and his, you know, his walk-in closet with all. And he also procured tickets for a pontifical mass that was going to be that Sunday, and it was a mass that the Pope gives to the peasants. So dozens and dozens of buses come in from the countryside of Italy for the pontifical mass. So we're now sitting in St. Peter's Square. Now, I was raised low Lutheran, which is very, very boring, right? No frills, no nothing. And here come the Swiss Army Guard carrying the pump of the Pope on like a stretcher type of thing, you know, on their shoulder. And the people inside the cathedral stand up and start clapping. Viva la Papa! Viva la Papa! I'm going, oh my God, this is like, like a football game. I've, I've never experienced anything like that. This is a long way to get around to the story. But while all of this was going on, right? And uh, applauding and... Hi, Chris. Viva la Papa. Guy behind my mother gooses her, pinches her in the ass. So, uh, yes, drying on the popes, yes. Well, typical. Think of it. I'm a 15-year-old snotty American kid. And we were in, like, the relic room and where all of the jewels are kept. And I said to the priest, uh, well, why don't you sell some of these jewels to help all the poor Catholics in the world? That's what I said to this guy. Can you believe I actually said that to the guy? And he kind of didn't, he didn't lose a beat. Uh, oh, wow, Safia. And he said, oh, no, it's not polite to give away gifts. These were all gifts to the popes. And you don't give away a gift. Didn't, he didn't skip a beat. <laughs> but I think back when I said to this guy, <laughs> yeah, you should be selling this stuff. No. no, you don't give away a gift. That's rude. I said, okay. So you were there. Oh, you too. You saw this. You, you, okay, so you experienced that applauding and like like a soccer game type of thing. Viva la papa. It's pretty cool. I like this because we got this little sunbeam here that's kind of, you can see him a little bit better. I didn't even notice that until someone pointed it out in chat. Oh, wow. Oh, I didn't see any nuns knocking over chairs to rush to, to the aisle to see him. We were kind of like, you know, like it's almost like bleachers that they had set up. And there was a huge aisleway where the Swiss Army Guard could carry him down to the, uh, the altar, so to speak. And the priest that gave us the private tour of the, you know, of the Pope's basically apartment 
All he wanted was mom to give a donation to his favorite charity. And of course, our guide told mom how much that was supposed to be. And I, I have no idea. But it was quite the experience for a little old Lutheran girl from New York. Got nothing here. I put this staircase in a couple of weeks ago, which I really like. I'd like to add some other stuff here. I can see the nuns now wailing their crucifixes. Get out of my way. Nothing here. Oh, I have something for here. I got a hummingbird, but I'm not so sure I want to put that there. I don't know. A lot of the gals are putting. I've only been to Rome. Actually, our flame, it was snowing. When we went to Rome, it's the first time it snowed there in 300 years. So we, we were, our flight was from New York to Milan, Milan to Rome. And we got off the plane. They, they got us off the plane in Milan and said the Rome airport is closed because there's a snowstorm. So we ended up taking the train from Milan to Rome, which is great because I got to see the countryside. Oh, that's cool. You know, so we were there in in in, in the winter. Um, we got out and we got into the airport. It was pretty late at, snow, at night. It was a heavy, wet snow. And they were sweeping it with brooms. They really didn't know what to do with it. I've got this dude, and he's kind of standing with a railroad car. And I don't know whether I should stick him here. Um, I don't know. Kind of thinking about that and not too sure about that. Italy's on your bucket list. Nothing here yet. I mean, you know, these books are going to take. That's what's so cool about them. Let's see. Nothing here. I got stuff, though. Look at that. Wow. Let's see. I put her on. I love her. I put her on a couple of weeks ago. She looks so good in the woods with the horses. Nothing here. Wow. Nothing here. Oh, okay. I have the turtle here. Even though it's the wrong kind of turtle, I thought he would look cute here. So I'm going to put the turtle here. Alicia, Candy's asking, you have family there? Oh, all your family's there, here. So when I'm going through magazines, you know, I'm kind of looking for little pictures that I think might fit. But as I'm saying, some of the ladies, they have many, many, uh, you know, they have many, many images on these pages. So, you know, I might add, you know, maybe something little up in here. You know, if I find something that kind of looks a little weird, I've got this guy. And he was standing by a dock. And I cut the dock away. And um, I like the way he's looking up. And I can't, if I cut this out, then his hand, his hand is kind of weird, you know? So if I have the dock, but I like the way that he's, he's, he's looking up. He's looking up at the falls. I had to give one away. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I can't begin to tell you all the books I gave away when I moved. Woo -wee. All right. I love her, and she's just full of attitude, and she doesn't fit, and she's just walking down this mountainside. 
So she's going to kind of go here at an angle. Otherwise, I'd have to cut off her crown. So we'll just tilt her. Ah, yes, that's a good idea, Aunt Bex. He could be creeping out. Oh, like here. Ooh. Good eye, Aunt Bex. Yes, look at that. And he blends right in. Look, that just blends right in with the log. Ooh. No, I think that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I will. Yes, she is going to turn an ankle in those heels. Oh, and while they're while they're in remodeling the house in Tuscany, the husband leaves he his brother has flown over to help out. He leaves them in a coffee shop and announces he's got to go pick up a truck. He said he's bought a truck. She thought he rented a truck, but they'd been driving around in a little Fiat. And so, uh, yeah, I should have cut that. Oh, that's okay. I can come back to that. Thank you. And they're going up to the, they're going up to the, the farmhouse, right? Um, and in, in Spain or in Mallorca, they would call what this was is a, they call it, they refer to it as a finca which is a small, like, farmette. Um, and he's late, and it's snowing. So they're driving through snow and ice on their way up to the... And he's late, and, you know, she's having, oh, where is he? You know, there's no cell service, of course. And uh, so he finally arrives, and he arrives in a three-wheeled truck, a little tiny, almost like a toy truck, smaller than the car that they've rented and it's got a one wheel in the front and two in the back and like a little little pickup thing and he's picked up wood and they're like what and when he tells her that he bought it she goes what do you mean you bought it and he said well we'll don't we'll say we'll ship it back home and we can you know he said he paid two thousand euros for it I can't imagine how unstable that three wheel and he had it loaded in the back with uh, with wood for one of the projects. All right. I don't have any fishes or anything here. Only thing I've got nothing laying over here. All right. So let's put her down. How are we doing on time? I got six minutes. Oh, well, I'm kind of glad I streamed. I almost didn't because I was so tired, but it's kind of woken me up a little bit, just talking and jabbering and reading chat and visiting with you guys. So I've been thinking about, you know, what I'm going to make the journal out of. Should I take apart an old book or do them? I like the Midori style, you know, with the elastic so you can take pages out and work on them and put them back. So, and I have one of those over here that I kind of started that I have some artwork in. The other thing. I was going through my stash of cardboard that I have out in the garage. And, you know, I was, I was thinking that I was watching Patricia of p &M, you know, do her foldy, you know, booky thing. Uh, and I have a lot of, uh, I save the inserts for the cases of vodka and that cardboard that the inserts is really great for making into little cards and foldy things. 
Okay. Now I have this little car here. And there's a road here. So I think I'm going to stick this on the road, kind of. And she's helping him drive, kind of. Or maybe drive off the road, maybe like that. So I'll stick that on there. So you've heard about the Viva La Papa. Yeah, I was, that was quite the trip, I'll tell you what. And, of course, the Sistine Chapel and uh, Michelangelo. And the interesting thing is the Pieta, Pieta, at the time, the real Pieta was on a tour, and it was in New York City when we were in Rome. So I didn't get to see, I only got to see a replica of it. I would like to see Mike, Michelangelo's David in Florence. I would, would like to see that for sure. There. You might not even notice that. When you open the thing, you're looking, and all of a sudden you go, what's that? Oh, every Wednesday at noon. Okay. We used to do that when I was a, one of my many things that I did really, when I was a volunteer fire person, fireman, fire lady. Every Tuesday, we'd go to the fire hall and we would check out all the equipment, you know, the oil and the air and the tires, and we would blast the fire siren to make sure everything was working every Tuesday. We have sirens here, but I don't know when they test them. All right, I found, we were talking about, oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Angie. That's going to be rough. I did. I actually did fight fires. I absolutely did. Yes, unfortunately, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's I have, that's another story I can tell. Not today, but um, this is uh, like a Bigfoot Sasquatch that came out of um, that very first sticker book that everybody bought. So I cut him out and stuck him in here. So we got that. And this was a hot air balloon out of one of those. And I tried to draw uh, the wires because I didn't want to leave it solid, so um, I, they didn't do such a great job. But I think that looks kind of cool. And again, I got a lot of... Oh, I thought this little ship would look funny here. Since it's a little stream, I'll put down a miniature ship. Yeah, that's an interesting thought to remember. I know some of the ladies in here have heard that story. Um, it was a battle. They didn't want me on the fire department because I was a woman. And I fought them. And I won. It was just blatant discrimination. Oh, I'm sorry, Angie, and it runs in your family. Well, you better, yeah, stay on top of it. Make sure you get a mammogram every year. Well, listen, I'm going to say so long. And um, thank you for stopping by. It's always a pleasure to hang out with you folks. And Aunt Bex is going to be on soon. I don't, I'm assuming she's coming on around 1.30-ish. And um, good to see you, too. Good to see all of you. So I will say goodbye. And oh, 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 one fifteen. Bex is coming on. I'm not streaming Sunday, St. Patrick's Day, because I will be at my friend's house in Cape Canaveral, probably my last sleepover until they move. So no stream for me on Sunday, and I will post that where I normally post my stream stuff. Okay. All righty. Again, if you can't be good, be careful. And interesting. Bye.